What happens when an NFL franchise has to declare for bankruptcy only two months before the season begins? Which forced the franchise to relocate across season having all current players opt out of their contracts and having even below average NFL players reject contracts. Your only option is to go out and sign a bunch of players that no other NFL team will want anything to do with. Welcome to the Rejects Madden 19 Franchise Series. So today we have a pretty big problem. Remember a few days ago when I said I made that test video to make sure there was no kinks and problems with my new computer? Well that video actually went well. Quality was great, audio was great, everything was fantastic. So we sat down and decided to record some rejects and I went to go edit the footage and the audio legit sounds like I was talking through an old Razer flip phone. So trust me, the fact that that happened and I wasted like 3 hours on my life is about 100 times more annoying to me than it is to you. So I apologize that the audio is going to sound like crap today. Now I ended up streaming last night instead of actually uploading the video because I was just too mad to sit down and edit the video. Which brings me to a point. Very soon here, I'm going to start streaming on Twitch. And I finally am going to be announcing my Twitch channel here. I will leave a link in the description box below. I will be doing frequent streams over on my Twitch whenever I do decide to finally get things going. It's legit the same exact name as my YouTube channel. It's twitch.tv slash rbtofficial. There will be a link to my Twitch in pretty much every single video from now on. So go ahead and go follow it. And hopefully we'll be starting that journey here sometime soon. But once again, I just apologize. The audio sucks here today. I mean, what can you do, right? Week number two of the regular season. And the 0-1 Chicago Bears are traveling to Dublin. And that's the 1-0 Dublin Shamrocks. As somehow and some way your Dublin Shamrocks in the regular season opener at home. Got the 21-17 narrow win over the Miami Dolphins in the head coaching debut for the newly appointed head coach, former Dublin Shamrock himself, Mark Herzl. And hopefully today he can continue to improve that head coaching record to 2-0, as hopefully we do get another win over the Bears today. But as always, at the beginning of every episode, we have some business to take care of before we do jump into week number two. First of all, the Dublin Shamrock faithful have had their voices heard. And they do want the Dublin Shamrocks organization to retire Mark Herzig's number of 59. The new head coach, the heart of the rejects, is going to have his number retired today. Which means we do have to change the number of young rookie star middle linebacker Chance Tramiel. As you guys already see, this is a spoiler. He did win the defensive player of the episode in the prior episode. Which does give him a plus one boost to his overall up to a 76. Had a phenomenal game. But unfortunately, he needs to build his brand as a shamrock with a new number. Let's go from 59. Let's give him something unique. Let's give him a single digit number five. If you guys did miss last episode, our tryout player was Michael Ower. Yes, the man from the blind side. And in an overwhelming vote, the fans voted that he did make the team. He was a big reason why our offensive line was so much better last episode. And with that, since he does make the team, we do extend it to a three-year deal worth the league minimum. So Michael Ower is going to be here for at least a couple seasons. And last thing, the Shamrock faithful have voted Dalton Croissant the player of the episode from last episode. And with that, he also gets a plus one boost to his overall up to a 64 overall from a 63. As it's time for the first time in this series for me, the owner to sort of push his own agenda. Now up to this point, it's going to continue to be the theme. The Dublin Shamrock fans out there are going to be the ones that run this franchise and the moves that we do make. But the owner does have his own suggestion here. And it is going to be left up to the Dublin Shamrock faithful, the reject fans, whether or not we actually try to execute this move next episode. So if you guys were watching live as the NFL draft did take place, we were extremely close to draft none other than Jalen Hurts. Because it makes sense. We had enough quarterbacks at the time. And he just drafted Tua in the first round. I thought it would have been a decent idea to have him as backup to have his depth. Because we all know the Jalen Hurts and Tua story. But at the time, the fans decided to vote against it as he did end up getting drafted by the Indianapolis Colts in the fourth round of the NFL draft as the quarterback out of Oklahoma had a good senior season and did get drafted into the NFL at a solid 74 overall. But as the owner, the proposition that I am making is a potential trade for Jalen Hurts with the idea of converting him to running back. 
as we all know, we do have a young rookie running back that we did draft in the seventh round last year at a 68 overall. But what better player to potentially add to the team? A team that's built around the heart, because we all know we don't have all the talent in the world. Our success is solely built off of heart and leadership. And what a better leader to add to the team than Jalen Hurts. We're going to have him as an emergency quarterback and as a potential running back. But we're not going to pull the trigger one way or another until next episode, until we give the Shamrock fans time to vote and to decide whether or not we do make a move for Jalen Hurts to be our new potential running back on the squad. So make sure to have your voices heard and take part in the poll in the description box below. With all that said, final step. Before we do jump into today's game, it is time to sign today's Dublin Shamrock tryout player. And at least for today's game and for today's episode, he is going to serve a very unique spot on the roster. That's going to be a wide receiver, an absolute legend, a veteran of the game, a future Hall of Famer. He's been retired for a few years up to this point, but wants another shot. No other NFL team wants to take a shot at him since he has been in the league for about five years at this point. But Dublin is a place where legends never die, as Devin Hester is going to be signing for your Dublin Shamrocks, a 36-year-old who has been out of the league for five years. Unfortunately, Devin Hester never got a Super Bowl ring of his own. We're trying to change that here in Dublin, giving Devin Hester another shot to use his talents on an NFL team. He's aging. His skill set is diminishing. But that does not mean he can't find a role here for your Shamrocks. But at this point, I'm pretty sure we all know a little bit about Devin Hester, the 36-year-old hailing out of the University of Miami, sitting at 5'11", 190 pounds. Had a glorious career in the NFL, was drafted by the Chicago Bears in round two of the 2006 NFL Draft. Had a great career with the Bears, then went on to the Falcons, Ravens, and Seahawks. But of course, we know his glory days was well spent with the Bears. What a man this guy is. A man that is a shoe-in for the Hall of Fame eventually. Made it to four Pro Bowls in his career. Had a decent career as a wide receiver with 3,000 receiving yards and 16 receiving touchdowns. What this man is known for and what he's going to serve as for your Dublin Shamrocks is the GOAT of kick returns, the GOAT of punt returns, as he holds the NFL record with 20 total returns for touchdowns, 14 punt return touchdowns, and also the NFL record for most returns for a touchdown in the season with six. What a man. Over 11,000 return yards, as he immediately is going to improve this kick and punt return game for your Shamrocks. He is going to be listed at wide receiver, but we're not real sure how much playing time he actually is going to see at wide receiver with him being 36 years old, but he is going to be seeing time, of course, as your kick and punt returner. We have had Dre Archer at kick and punt return since he made the roster about a year ago up to this point, and with that 98 speed, we thought our special teams was going to get an immediate boost. But really, we haven't had any success in the kick and punt return game. But that's what Devin Hester is here to change. Looking at his ratings, 92 speed, still super solid for a 36-year-old. But what we're worried about is his kick return stats. And at 99, it doesn't get much better than that. As Devin Hester comes in as a 96 overall punt returner, overtakes Dre Archer's spot. And at kick return, he's going to come in at a 99 overall. So you either have to kick it to Devin Hester or Dre Archer. So that's definitely going to be in the mind of the opponent's kicker every game we do play if he does make the roster after today's game. But at least for today, we're going to be able to see what type of impact Devin Hester is going to make on our special teams. And unfortunately, with that signing and making him active for today's game, we do have to cut a player as the roster is now at 54. And we're going to have to cut Nate Robinson. He's the fifth corner on the depth chart. Hasn't got any playing time really since he did make the team over a year ago. The former basketball player. The former NBA slam dunk contest star. What a story coming back into the NFL after years and years of being out of the game. We thank him for his service here in Dublin. But sometimes hard decisions do have to be made. And this right here was just a business decision. But enough behind the scenes business. It's time now to get to work. Cloverfield, Dublin, Ireland, as we look to keep the Chicago Bears winless on the year, as it's a fact that nobody can come to Cloverfield, nobody can come to Dublin and come out with an easy win. They might be almost 20 overall higher than us, but it's getting repetitive at this point. It's not about talent here in Dublin. It's about the heart that we have. It's about the leadership that we do display. Oh, boys, here we go. Dublin, Ireland, Cloverfield. The Chicago Bears are coming to town, and they're coming to town for what's going to be a huge help for the Bear organization. They're going to be leaving Dublin with disappointment, with embarrassment. It's no easy task 
coming to Cloverfield in front of 70,000 screaming Shamrock fans. One of the most dangerous places to play football. One of the loudest environments in the league. It's time once again to get to work, to be great. Devin Hester's first kick return as a Shamrock and just great. <laughs> Goes out of the freaking back of the end zone. At least one thing Cody Parkey can do well. Getting the ball first and this one. Looking to potentially take a shot on the first play of this game. They have him beat already. Josh Gordon down the seam with the catch. That has been probably the best one play start we've had in team history. First play, we saw everybody in the box. We saw the safety blitz. Great recognition from the young rookie quarterback Tua. He throws it deep to Josh Gordon. And it's poetry. In comes the young rookie running back, Jermaine Dockett. Going nowhere. Khalil Mack, the machine. Still a bear with a stop in the backfield. He's going to have probably a huge say in what happens in today's game. Letting Tua go empty again early in this ball game. The slant is wide. That is the actual first extremely inaccurate pass. I've seen into his young career. Well, after what should have been a first down, the inaccuracy leads to a third down and 13. Can Tua make up for it here? We have the slant. Open deep. Drag his feet. And that is none other than Justin Blackman with the catch. All the Shamrock faithful was complaining and worried. Where the heck was Justin Blackman last episode? I don't know. He just... Just an off game, I suppose, but this time, the first drive of this game shows the deadly trio of Justin Blackman, Josh Gordon, and Tua Tonga Viola, what they can accomplish, and hopefully we're going to see a lot of that the rest of this game. So in checks our offensive team captain for the first time in this ball game. Dalton Croissant comes in on second down and nine. Rico gathers, he's open, the tight end with another drop. He has been the biggest disappointment of this season up to this point. A fumble last game, a dropped what should have been a touchdown right there, as now it's going to be a third down and nine after the drop touchdown to third and nine. Let's see if Tua once again can be great and pick up at least nine here. Just wait a second, wait a second, the slant, it's open, and the water, and Josh Gordon with the number change in today's episode gets the touchdown reception as what a perfect start here from your Dublin Shamrocks. And what a drive from Tua was an accurate little bit of this drive, but picked up two huge third downs and was effective when he needed to. As long as drives end in points, that's all we can ever ask for here in Dublin. Tua to Josh Gordon to Justin Blackman on this drive, perfection. Well, out comes this Dublin Shamrock defense, which was like the main reason we did win last episode. Coming out with the blitz, the young quarterback Mitch Trubisky throws an interception on the first play of this game, and none other than D. Virgin, our defensive captain, gets the pick. What an absolute perfection of a start here in Dublin. We score on the first drive of the game with a touchdown and first play of the game on defense. Coming up with a huge turnover. Divergent Virgin with the interception. What has gotten into this team? I'm telling you, Mark Herzlick, a legend. The best acquisition this team has made in franchise history was hiring that man as head coach because ever since that happened, this team, completely different. Might be asking how and why is it a second down and 24? Just don't ask questions because we're going to pick it up here in two plays. Josh Gordon, he's going to make the catch in stride. And Josh Gordon, first down. Our center, Dylan Day, gets hurt on the play. That sort of rhymed, but I guess it doesn't matter that it rhymed because the player got injured. But at the end of the day, a strike there from Tua to Josh Gordon. Second down and 18 here. Josh Gordon on the comeback route. It's another catch from the man wearing 12. As that was a dot. Third and one. Going to give the ball here to our offensive team captain. Dalton is going to pick up the first down. Second down and 15 following a sack here. There's another one. Mike Taylor, bro. He is not living up to that first round status. The amount of sacks he has allowed in two games is awful. Absolutely awful. Like, you're giving your quarterback zero time to throw the football. That dampers things a little bit. Let's just make sure we don't get sacked again. That would kick us out of field goal range. Third and 24 here. Okay, so Josh Gordon. Unbelievable. Unfreaking believable. Josh Gordon was wide open. And Tua throws that inside for some reason. I was like, let's go ahead and pick up the 10 yards. And get at least into easy field goal range. I mean, Josh Gordon, wide open. 
wide freaking open. Fit that right there, that's, that might be a first down. But for some reason, Tua thinks it's a great idea to throw it inside. That's a sack. This team is on another level. Chance Trammell for the first time in today's game strikes. As that is just perfection. Like, I'm going to keep bringing pressure until the Bears show that they can protect it. It's another run, and he's going nowhere. Jordan Howard, try again, brother, as that brings this game already into the second quarter. Aside from some sloppy plays on offense, some sacks, and a couple bad throws, this start could not be any better, which is kind of sad because we're only up by a touchdown. Third down and 19. No way the Bears at this rate pick up this first down in pressure. We're not going to get the sack, of course. He's going nowhere. Picks up four yards. So there's defense continuing to get stops, continuing to come up big when it matters the most, as maybe that's just the Mark Herzlick effect. What a pathetic punt. Like, what actually is that? I mean, I understand being scared of Devin Hester, but that, that was awful. Bringing their safety up first and going to hand it off to Dalton. Dalton bouncing to the outside. He's going to pick up a first down. So third and inches here. Main thing here. Pick up points. Make this a two-possession game. In comes Trent Richardson on the third down and short. He is going to get it. Plenty of room. Hand off to Dalton again. Dalton's going to power his way forward for about six. That's the Dalton croissant that I know and love. Second down and four. Have a good feeling here. The comeback route. Josh Gordon to the one. Oh, that was so close. Still being a touchdown, but John Gordon already in this game with 126 yards. And you boys know what time it is. It's time for the big man, the big guy with a big heart and a big soul. In comes fullback Laquan McCowan on the goal line. We need one yard. And of course, we don't get it. But that's why we like to call it twice in a row, because it's just got to happen. You can't keep Laquan McCown out of the end zone two consecutive, or maybe you freaking can. Stick to your plan here. Third down and goal. You can't keep Laquan McCown out of the end zone three consecutive plays. And there it is the big man with a big heart. The luck of the Irish Laquan McCowan into the end zone as yes, that score line is accurate. The Shamrocks have a two-possession lead in the second quarter over the Chicago Bears, who are 20 overall higher than them. That's what I like to call a beautifully coached team. Second down and three. Got the check down covered. Not the running back, though. Jordan Howard, who's been the only offense thus far for the Bears. That's what happens when we drop back in coverage. When we blitz, we at least force quick throws and we knock the ball out of their hands it's just not optimal unless we actually blitz because it forces quick throws like that that's literally the same exact play twice in a row with the same result twice in a row this missing knocks the ball loose two straight plays which is just insane so why not try to make it a third dude if this same play happens again in a blitz i am calling the fbi and turning myself in because that is a little bit too far outside my comfort zone. Bring a pressure again, another quick throw. That's an awful route to the football, Sua. That could have been a stop before the first down marker, but Sua took an awful angle to the football. Down and 10. That's gonna be a touchdown. God dang it. God freaking dang it. Another awful angle to the football. That's how quick things can change here in Dublin. I blame it all on Sua. If we took a better angle to the football in the prior play, that would have been a stop before the first down marker. Devin Hester, come on, bro. Show us what you got. Devin Hester out to like the 29th, so that's good. A minute and 20 seconds to go. Let's be smart with the football, but at the same time, try and once again make this a two-possession game going into halftime because the Bears do get the ball at the start of the second half. So second and 10 here. Justin Blackman! Oh my god, is this going to be a touchdown for the big man? All it takes is one play for the man to strike. This offense, this wide receiver core, deadly. Literally one play. 
the safety was doing something not of this world there. Just completely ran away from Justin Blackman. Allowed that deep right side of the field to be completely open. Justin Blackman with the catch. He's a big man, but he has some sneaky speed to him with the touchdown. A 71-yard bomb. Mainly a run after the freaking catch. But good throw from Tua good enough to allow him to catch the ball in stride. I really think they're going to once again try and just run the ball here. And try to run the clock out. We're just going to call a timeout. With that, once again, try to bring pressure. It's going to be a draw. Another stop in the backfield. We're calling a timeout. And, bro, this could be easily. We have two timeouts with 50 seconds left to go. This could be a three-possession game going into halftime, which I would think would break a record for biggest lead, biggest halftime lead we've had in franchise history. Second down and 10 here. I think this comeback route's going to be open. Beautiful timing from the quarterback and wide receiver. They must be practicing that comeback route almost every day after practice because thus far in today's game, the timing has been impeccable. Almost 150 yards in this first half for Josh Gordon already. I mean, these DBs from the Bears have no match for Justin Blackman and Josh Gordon. Bears DBs once again potentially making a mistake here. The safety's playing pretty close in, close to the box. And both outside receivers, Josh Gordon and Justin Blackman, which we all know what they're capable of, are both being pressed. I am pretty much expecting one of these guys to get open down the field. Both of them did. Justin Blackman, I see you, brother. Please catch it in stride. And he does. Justin Blackman down to the seven. Tua Tonga Viola with the diamond stride. Beautiful, bro. Both Justin Blackman and Josh Gordon with roughly 150 yards in the same half. He's not going to be open, so we're going to scramble. No, we're not. Oh, tight end. Rico Gathers. Rico Gathers is awful. He's absolutely awful. He put up one hand. What type of moron trying to catch a ball in the back of the end zone instead of putting up two hands, puts up one. Moron. Second down and goal. Can't get sacked. Can't get sacked. Just can't be sacked. Come on, somebody. Somebody. We're going to scramble. Tua in to the end zone as Tua. Tonga Viola strikes again as that very well also might be a record for most points ever scored in one half in franchise history. I don't know what Mark Herzlick is feeding the players before every game, but I've never seen such an instant response from our players, from our team, because obviously it is like playing for them. Yeah, brother, go ahead and kneel that football as the Bears need to just go ahead and leave Dublin, take their private jet, and get out of here. Go back to the States and go ahead and get a head start on next Sunday's matchup because this game is over. Not really. Not really because we all know it can happen. But what a beautiful performance, to be fair, from the Dublin Shamrocks. Defense, incredible. Offense, aside from that one drive where we turned the ball over, there's been a couple, a couple glaring mistakes, uh, especially from Rico Gathers. We've been sacked a little bit too many times, too, which you probably haven't saw. Been sacked like five times already. Start off this second half. It's the third and three. They're going to play action pass. We're bringing pressure, forcing a throw. Can't believe we missed that sack. Got to keep our heads in the game, bro, because you see how quick teams can get down the field on us. Once again, a quick slant, and within like four plays, they're already in the red zone. Bringing the big boys, and it's going to be a run up the middle. Jordan Howard is going to evade Dillard Stevens. Going to pick up the first down, second down and goal. Empty set for the Bears. Come on, boys. Hey, is anybody going to cover Jordan Howard? Over there, I guess a little bit insane. Right there, gonna make the tackle before he gets into the end zone. Third and goal, time to come up big. Third and goal, they're bringing in their heavy package. So are we. Hand off up the middle. Jordan Howard going nowhere. Sua Cravens coming up and run support. Screwed us over earlier. Comes up big this time, making up for his earlier mistake. As we are gonna force the Bears to a field goal. I don't know down by 21 why they're attempting a field goal, not going for the touchdown here. But with this, it's still going to be a three-possession game. Let's just not make any turnovers. Let's be smart for the drag here. Josh Gordon fights off a tackler. I kind of want to do something here. Fourth down and one. If we make a mistake here, we're still up by three possessions, so it's not at the end of the world. But we have got to use them. Booty here. We're going to try it. Booty was not effective in the preseason. But as long as he's effective, when it counts, I'll take it.
booty on the fake punt. Come on! They really don't seem in any hurry here. I mean, there's only six minutes to go, and they're down by 18. So, Bears, you do you. As long as we don't have any dumb mistakes. I mean, we that's why I like to blitz. Because we don't blitz, we just can't get to the quarterback. I am just in awe at the fact that they act like they just don't care. They're not going hurry up. They just, like, don't even care. So, I mean, that doesn't matter to me, really, because, I mean, we can get tackles like this. Who runs the ball on third down and five when they're down by 18 points with five minutes to go? Insane. I mean, they're going to go for it, obviously, here, but if we get this stop, it's a GG. We are Dublin Shamrocks, and we'll begin this season 2-0 because the Bears, they just simply didn't come to play today. There's still some time left, though, so let's be smart here. I left him wide open. The big hit from Hayesport doesn't knock the ball loose. Allen Robinson with the first down. But, I mean, there's only four minutes left to go, and they're not going hurry up. Like, I don't even care if they score a touchdown because the clock just keeps on ticking. So, second and goal from the two, they're throwing the football. It's going to be... Oh, Sua Cravens once again. Daddy Nicholas gets injured. Sua Cravens beat on the outside. They catch the touchdown, but with that... It's still going to be a two-possession game with three minutes to go. The Bears going for the onside kick. I don't even recall a team kicking an onside kick against us the whole entire series. And Corey Coleman just cut on a freaking dime. Because we do recover the onside kick. Two-minute warning. Third down and one. In comes our team captain, Adult Croissant. All we need is one yard to solidify this dub. And we are going to get it and much more. Dalton Croissant finally starting to break out as boys, unless something absolutely catastrophic happens here in the last two minutes. Looks like your Shamrocks, for the first time in team history, are going to remain undefeated through two weeks. Bears out of timeouts, third down and three. This now officially would seal the deal. Dalton, once again, to the outside. He is going to fight forward and be like a yard shy, I believe. If we could solidify this dub with a one-yard run from Laquan McCowan to pick up the first down, we're going to do it. Laquan up the middle. Easy freaking money. Play the music, boys, as your Shamrocks now officially are going to improve to 2-0 on the year as what a magical start to this season it has been i think we made the correct hire in hiring mark herslick to the team because this team the difference between the preseason and now is immaculate words that the english language can't come up with don't even describe the change that we have seen in this team in just a few weeks of time but with that, we do officially improve to 2 and on the year with a 28-17 win over the Chicago Bears. As us in Dublin are almost impossible to beat. What a freaking game. And that might have been the most comfortable win we have got in team history. As what a game from our offense. Tua Tungavaiola had that one mistake. He did overthrow a couple passes, but that one no mistake in the interception. But outside of that was perfect. 10-17, 300 yards, two touchdowns, and an interception. Running the football once again. We just kind of split the carries. Dalton Les with 35 yards. And, of course, Laquan McCowan had that one touchdown. The rookie had about 19 yards. But the story, Josh Gordon and Justin Blackman. Justin Blackman averaging almost 50 yards per reception. That is is mental scenes here in Dublin like what a game from both of these guys and defensively we had Hayes pull at lead us in tackles also Ty Levante Davis and Chance Trammell we had our game started off in spectacular fashion as we did have D Virgin who only had two tackles on the game but he had the lone interception from our defense put a stamp early on in this game on how our defense was gonna play first play of the game for the Bears they threw a pick the D Virgin what a guy what a team. What a life. Guys, I am sensing something special here for your Shamrocks in season number two. We do have two new injuries. Dylan Day out for five weeks. Daddy Nicholas out for four weeks. Dog, how are you out for four weeks with a pulled groin? 
Like, I understand a shoulder tear. A shoulder tear and a pulled groin should never almost be equivalent in length of injury. That is just dumb. But that kind of sucks. Two starters out for about a month now. So that's just unfortunate. But we can't have too much of an awful damper to the end of this episode because we did get the win 28-17 to as we advance into week number three to begin our divisional matchups. AFC South play as we are taking on the undefeated Indianapolis Colts in our last game of our three-game home stretch here in Dublin as one team next episode is going to come out of that game no longer undefeated. But guys, that is going to do it for today's episode. Hope you guys did enjoy. If you did, make sure to smash a huge thumbs up. Make sure to take part in the straw polls in the description box below. With that said, I'll catch you guys next time. Have a great rest of your day. God bless and peace.